In today's video, you will learn how to paint these watercolor mushrooms in less than 30 minutes. Hey everyone, Therese here. Welcome or welcome back. Let's warm ourselves up for the coming autumn season and mushrooms are one of the best subjects to practice painting. So I'm gonna be using this Canson XL 300 GSM cold pressed watercolor paper. We're gonna be painting 8 kinds of mushrooms and before we get to painting, it's always nice to start with a pencil sketch. Let's sketch together our first mushroom by drawing an oval shape as our guide for the cap, then the stem with two long lines and just connect it with a curve. Around the oval shape, we're drawing these imperfect lines to add a bit of texture. On the bottom, we're making the lines go inside the oval shape, creating some dimension. Onto our second mushroom is very simple and easy. Again, drawing the cap in a spherical shape, draw the stem from the middle of the underside area and curve it in the opposite direction of the cap. Next, we start with these two thin stems that are connected at the bottom. We're varying the sizes of the caps. This one is bigger and a little bit pointy on top like a bell shape and the other one is smaller and rounder. We're making the gills visible as well in this perspective. And then we have another one with a thick stalk and a chubby cap in this semi-circle shape and making the edges a bit bumpy for some texture. Really simple and quick. Our fifth mushroom will have this ring or skirt, so we're drawing them in three sections and an umbrella-like cap which is a bit longer than the ones we have drawn earlier. We're also showing the gills a little bit, drawing a sort of a letter S shape edge. Next, we have a wider stem. Imagine a shape of a glass, which will curve to the sides of the cap, and we want to draw the other mushroom higher up, so we will have a stalk that falls behind the mushroom in the foreground. And this time, the cap is thinner than the previous ones. Moving on, we're drawing similar to our third mushroom, two thin stems connected together and the bell-shaped caps, but this one has edges with little cuts in between or that look like a pleated skirt. <laughs> then we'll have a baby mushroom on the other one. Lastly, we're drawing an oval-shaped guide again, which is slightly slanted to the left, a thick stalk with curvy lines connecting on both sides of the oval shape. The cap is quite different. It resembles a flower. So we're drawing the edges with wavy lines and we're making it a bit dimensional by adding some curvy lines at the back. We'll just erase the oval shape guideline and we can start painting. We're going to be using a round brush and watercolor paints so you can grab any set that you happen to have. I'm using a number 6 round brush and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. But if you're interested in the supplies I'm using, they are always listed on the video description. We will do this step by step. It's going to be an easy process even if you're a beginner, so just relax, have fun, and I believe you can do this. I erased the pencil marks a little bit because we don't want it to be as dark as our initial sketch since it's not possible to erase them once we applied paint on top. We'll then start painting our first mushroom by loading our brush with the beige color for the base layer of the stem, just painting the whole shape with it. Using a 300 GSM watercolor paper is the best place to do some wet on wet technique, so while the base is still wet, we're picking up some Van Dyke brown. It can be a mix of black and brown and we'll just gently dab the pigment onto the wet paint and watch it spread out beautifully. Now let's paint the cap with yellow base layer. The gills are quite visible on the right side so we'll follow the pencil outlines and pick up the beige color again to paint the underside. While painting, I also want to share their specific names. So this one is called Melanoleuca evanosa, an edible mushroom. The cap has a dark spot in the center so we mixed up brown and black with more pigment and applied on the middle just before the wavy edges. The previous layer has already dried up at this point so this is where we can add some texture. We're just dragging the paint outwards creating thin strokes halfway and from the edges of the cap we're doing the same strokes inwards and leaving some gaps in between. We'll just continue building the texture and shadows by adding another dark brown shade to the edges, on the center, and some fine lines. Mm -hmm. 
Let's have a darker warm gray to paint the gills and we're keeping them slightly curvy and not too straight to define the shape of the cap. Then we can go back to the stem to add some more shadows and texture using the same warm gray. Make your hand a little bit shaky and create these messy layer of paint. And finally, add those details with a darker tone. And we're done with our first mushroom. Let's paint the second one right away. We're painting this cute little stem and the underside with beige. We're gonna mix another color by taking brown and red and also some burnt umber to deepen the color. Then we will paint that on our round cap. You may see the paint pulling on the area where our paintbrush goes. So we can just drag some of the water on the side of the cap creating a three-dimensional form. We're adding a bit of texture with these tiny downward strokes. We can then add some shadows on the stalk as well. You can basically add this in the beginning with the wet on wet technique, but you can also add them on a dry layer. I think that's a perk of using a good quality watercolor paper. You can work on different painting techniques. The cap is still quite wet. We can also create highlights by drying our brush with a paper towel and lift up the paint on the center. Then we'll just define the shape of the mushroom a bit more with darker details using the Van Dyke brown with less water. So this mushroom is Agaricus bisporus or also known as button mushroom which is the most common type we can find in the grocery store. Alright, onto our next mushroom we're painting two slim stems in the same beige color. So most of our mushroom painting today has this stem color so we'll have to mix a ton of that. The color of the caps will be this burnt sienna for that reddish brown color. The caps are more umbrella-like shape, so we'll just follow the outline and we don't have to worry about them looking perfect. The same way, we also drag the pigments more to the corners and then we're taking the first light yellow mix we have earlier for the base of the underside. We're adding shadows along the left side and a bit on top of the cap using the brown mix we used for the bottom mushroom and we're positioning the lighter areas to the right side this time. Now painting the gills with this light brown using the very tip of the brush with a light pressure, just keep the lines closer toward the stem. Likewise, we're adding shadows to the stems as well with medium tone, doing it really messy and the final details. Did you recognize what kind of mushroom this is? It is the lawn mowers mushroom or the haymaker and they are non-edible. Okay, moving on to our fourth mushroom. Just as how quick it was to sketch, it will be the same with painting. It has this thick beigey stem and adding those grayish brown pigment on the wet surface. We're using yellow ochre for the base color of the cap and we're taking brown and dabbing the pigments on the sides and the round contour while some sections on the center remain lighter. Now let's go back to the stem to add shadows and textures by painting these thin vertical lines very lightly. It's always better to start lightly and then just darken it if you want to. Then we'll just build up the texture more with darker tones of the colors we used for the base layers. This edible wild mushroom is scientifically called Bolitus edulis or also known as the porcini or penny bun mushroom. And yeah, the cap indeed looks like a bun. The next one is a favorite kind of mushroom to paint. I think you're familiar with the fly agaric or Amanita muscaria, a famous enchanting mushroom but highly toxic. So we started with the stem as usual and those warm shadows on a damp surface. Then we will prepare the colors for the cap. We like to use two shades of red here. One is a permanent red deep that we're just bringing onto the palette. 
Another shade is a mix of the permanent red deep and a bit of purple to darken it. We will begin painting the cap with lighter shade of red while leaving some white spots. You could outline these in the beginning with a pencil too but I wanted to make these distinctive white scales intentionally random and organic but if you find it difficult, you can paint the whole cap with a base color first and use a white pen or white gouache or acrylic paint. And then we also added a darker shade of red for dimension. We're using the same colors for the stem to paint the base of the gills visible underneath. But while it's still wet, I decided to darken the shadows more on the cap using the mix of burnt umber and brown and to outline the scales lightly. Using our Van Dyke brown again to define the shape of the stem and the area where it joins the cap for some depth. It also has a skirt-like structure, so we're applying more detail on the sections to kind of separate them. Then using our light brown shade to paint vertical lines for the textures on the stem and the direction of the gills. Next, we're painting oyster mushrooms. These edible mushrooms grow in groups, so we're painting two of them. They have a beautiful shape and the stem is quite similar to a broccoli where it gets slightly larger as it moves to the cap. Then we're using a mix of burnt umber and a bit of purple to paint the caps which have quite flat and slightly domed shapes. The same way we want the sides to be darker and the center highlighted, then we can work on the detail of the stems. These have ridges that flow from under the cap to the stems. We start with a darker color, just using the same burnt umber and purple mix slightly near the caps of each mushroom and gets lighter towards the bottom. And then we'll just finish them with some more shadows on the caps. Moving on again, we're painting two mushrooms with thin stems and umbrella-shaped caps resembling the third kind of mushroom we already painted. We're using a light gray for the base layer of the caps and adding those dark shadows with black on the right side. The stems doesn't have to be anything detailed, but we're just adding the shadows. You can also imagine a shaggy hair in terms of the form of the cap, so we're painting thin strokes for the texture and the underside with black as well as those tiny cuts to form the small sections on the edges. These are inky cap mushrooms and they can have a different form and scaly appearance. They also have black ink literally dripping but we just went for a simple one today. And while they may sound non-edible, common inky cap mushrooms can be eaten but not to be consumed with alcohol. Alright, we're down to our last mushroom and it's called Chanterelle, an edible fragrant mushroom that grows in the woods. We're painting the base with yellow and add some depth with burnt sienna. The form of the stem is quite similar to the oyster mushrooms that we painted. It is also a bit wider as it curves to the cap. At the top is the coiled fleshy cap which can be quite wavy on the edges. So we're painting the inside as well with burnt sienna to give it three dimensionality. Once we have established the shape of the cap and the stem, we can start to add in some ridges that form along the stem near the top of the mushroom. This is where we can start adding in some more shadows and details, defining the shape of the coiled cap and shading along the top section of the stem that falls just underneath and to the surface of the fleshy cap as well. All 
our eight watercolor mushrooms are now complete. To finish off our composition, we will just add some foliage or grass around some mushrooms. Alright, that's it for this mushroom watercolor painting tutorial video. I had so much fun painting these and I hope you learned something and maybe give these a try. You can tag me on social media if you do so I can see your lovely creations. I'd love to know too if you'd like to see more painting videos like this in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye everyone!